Simon. Today's powerful earthquake near the Loyalty Islands north of New Zealand comes as scientists gather in Haast to study the Alpine Fault. They say there's a 75% chance of a rupture in the next 50 years and their work is a matter of urgency. So they've found a new way to find out more about the fault. Somewhere down there, fibre optic cables laid by Chorus two years ago to bring broadband to remote communities, stretching hundreds of kilometres from Fox Glacier to Lake Hawia. At one point near Haast, the cable crosses the Alpine Fault. Too good an opportunity for researchers from Victoria University of Wellington and the Australian National University to let slip by. They got permission to piggyback, placing instrumentation to record the movements of the dark fibre, not the one currently supplying internet. Theory is if the ground shakes, the cable shakes too. Sensors every four metres record any movement. One month and already 801 quakes. The 30 kilometre stretch they're monitoring would have had two seismometers, one at each end. Now there are 8,000 lines of data. What secrets will the sleeping giant reveal? And Professor John Townend from Victoria University is leading the research. Thanks for your time, John. How will this monitoring help you and your team with your research? We understand a lot about the long-term behaviour of the Alpine Fault. There's been some very painstaking research over many decades to understand how often the Alpine Fault produces really big earthquakes. But what we don't know is really what happens in any individual earthquake. Does it start in Haast, for example, and rupture towards the northeast, or does it start up near Inchbonny or Hopiti and, and rupture down towards the uh, southwest? And that really matters in terms of the sorts of ground shaking that we might expect in different parts of the South Island and, and central New Zealand. Is this type of data collection happening anywhere else in the world? It's really uh, exploding, I think. Um, it's something that has really only become practicable in the last few years, maybe the last five or ten years, because of the enormous volumes of data it generates. At the moment, we're recording something like most of a gigabyte of data every minute. And so being able to record all that data and then sift through it and find the signals of interest is something that has required you know, big advances in storage and in artificial intelligence and, and other sorts of techniques. So around the world now, people are finding an ever-increasing number of opportunities for using the fibers that we install for our broadband communications as ways of, of sensing the environment. So does this make the Alpine Fault one of the world's most monitored faults? It depends really what sort of monitoring you're thinking about, but at the moment, yes, Haast is, is sort of the epicentre for thinking about the internal structure of a fault zone. There are other big faults around the world. The San Andreas Fault, for example, is, is the real um, the classic, where people are trying similar sorts of things. But one of the sort of very sem serendipitous um, situations with, with the Alpine Fault here is that Chorus's cable runs along the fault in South Westland, and then it crosses the fault and, and moves up towards Makarora and, and Hawia, etc. And you say this work is a matter of urgency. What do you mean by that? Colleagues who've been looking at the long-term behaviour of the Alpine Fault have worked out, based on really amazing records, that the fault produces big earthquakes quite frequently by global standards. It produces an earthquake of magnitude 7.5 or 8, which is larger than we've seen in New Zealand in the last few years, um, about every 260-odd years. And right now, we're about 306 years since the last big earthquake. And that doesn't mean the earthquake is going to happen tomorrow. It might still take years or decades. We need to understand uh, as much about the internal configuration of the fault as we can. And then we can synthesize all sorts of different scenarios, all sorts of different ways that the fault might rupture, and think about what that means for how we build infrastructure, how we build buildings, how we prepare communities. And so it's, in, in that sense, I think the research is very important. It's very timely. We need to understand as much as possible because we have a fairly good idea that we are late in, in the typical cycle. Thanks, John. Great to talk to you. Kia ora, Thank you.